good morning children this early morning session is dedicated to class 12 and we are taking up lesson deep water yeah well it is written by William Moore Douglas first of all you ask sir what is this I mean deep water related to well the central theme of this uh, I mean write up this story is the greatest fear we have to fear is the fear itself you know uh, this this is an extract taken from a book of men and mountains written by William O. Douglas the narrator you know has developed an aversion a dislike to water right from a young age you know the narrator recalls a horrific incident that took place when he was just 10 to 11 years old he had decided to learn swimming. Therefore, YMCA pool was a very suitable one. It was safe. And therefore, he chose to learn his swimming hobby uh, from YMCA, you know, pool. And that, that was supposed to be very, very safe. It was just three feet deep at the shallow end and nine feet deep on the, uh, on the other hand. The drop was gradual. And therefore, it was uh, taken by him as a very safe, I mean, place to uh, learn swimming. You know, in comparison to the Yakima River, Yakima River was treacherous. The narrator's mother continually reminded and warned the narrator of the drowning cases. She kept on describing in details all the drowning cases that took place in Yakima River and warned him not to go there. You know, at the age of three to four, when he was just a kid, he was taken by his father to California Beach. And, you know, unfortunately, he was, you know, knocked down by the wave and the wave washed over him. He was buried under water and he was almost, you know, uh, inside the water. When his father rescued him, he laughed at him. This misadventure actually got revived. The introduction to the pool revived the narrator's unpleasant memories and inspired his childhood fears. Still, he tried to learn swimming by imitating the other boys. He, he was just beginning to feel at an ease in water when a mishap happened. He went to the pool one day and found that no one else was there. He didn't have the dare, I mean, daring he didn't have the courage to go inside the water of the pool alone. Therefore, he waited for some other boys to come. He was sitting at the edge of the pool. Meanwhile, a bully, big bully came. A very strong boy came. He took Douglas in his hand and, I mean, threw him into the deep end of the, of the pool. Douglas landed in sitting position inside the you know, pool. And he was at the bottom of water. He was just frightened, not frightened out of his mind but he made a plan to save himself when his feet would hit the bottom he would make a big jump come up the surface lie flat on it and paddle to the edge of the pool however the nine foot dip seemed more like 90 feet for him that nine foot dip uh, or depth of the pool seemed like 90 feet dip for him and he was totally out of breath when he, his feet landed at the bottom. Still, with all his strength, he made a jump. And, but he, his jump was of no avail. He, he came slower than he had thought. And he, when he opened his eyes, he saw nothing but water all around. Then he came up with the surface and started beating up the surface. You know, after a while, when he opened his eyes, he saw nothing but water all around. Only his heart and the pounding of his head said that he was alive. Douglas told himself that he had to remember to jump when he reached the bottom. He again jumped with his might, but his jump went in vain and he was still underwater. The stark terror took him you know, more tightly in its clutches. Douglas describes how a fear paralyzed him. His arms and legs stopped moving. How fear paralyzed him. His arms and, you know, <coughs> legs stopped moving. He remembered with fright. He tried to call for his mother, but nothing was 
happening. Suddenly, Douglas found himself coming out of water. He sucked a lot of water. Then he, you know, started going down for third time. Then all his efforts, he again seized his body and jumped. A blackness took over him, his brain, and, you know, with a wiped out fear and terror, everything went quiet and peaceful. Douglas felt as if he was in the arm of his mother. Then he felt unconscious. The next morning, he remembers that he was just lying. Um, lying. The next thing that he remembered was that he was just lying on his stomach beside the pool and vomiting. Then the terror destroyed Douglas' social life and tried to overcome it. Douglas could not eat and sleep at night. He was quite disturbed. He was weak and trembling. He you know, shook and cried on his bed. He never went back to the pool. He feared water and avoided it. You know, he could, whenever he went near water, the terror that he had seized him in the, in, in the pool and he returned back. This handicap stayed with him as years rolled by. This handicap stayed with him as years rolled by. You know, rolled by. And it ruined his fishing trips, deprived him of the joy of canoeing, boating, and swimming. He tried his best to overcome his fear, but it didn't let go, go him. Finally, to, uh, Douglas decided to get swimming instructor. He went to a pool and practiced five days a week under the guidance of an instructor. The instructor put a belt around his waist. This anime asked him to practice. That way he practiced swimming. And, you know, the rope went through a pulley. The instructor held on the other end of the rope. Each time the instructor relaxed his hold. And that way he tried to practice, you know, swimming. After the training was finished, Dugla wondered if he would be, you know, terrorized again. When he would be alone in the pool. He tried and tried and finally... He overcame the fear. He went to Lake Wenworth in New Hampshire and swam two miles across the lake without anyone's help. When Douglas was in the middle of the lake, he put his face under and saw nothing but bottomless water. The old sensation came back to haunt him, but this time Douglas was strong. He swam and he established his courage and at that first opportunity, he went to the warm lake. He swam to the other shore. He was thrilled with the joy and he had, because he had conquered his fear. That is what this story suggests. Once you conquer your fear, see right from the beginning, you see how Dugla was terrorized, I mean, by the fear of water. He, he didn't even, I mean, go inside the pool without anybody help. He had to employ an instructor who could help him and give him training. And for several I mean, months, he was trained by the instructor. Then after he regained his confidence and he, you know, swam. When he overcame his fear, he swam two miles of the Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire without anybody's help. And not only that, he, you know, after gaining confidence, he swam and the, you know, the river. And that the lake, warm lake, and, you know, established himself that he was really a, a brave, I mean, swimmer. He, he, he overcame the fear. The sensation came back to haunt him, but he overcame the fear. And that was what his trump over this fear was. That is how he explains that death was peaceful, but it was the fear of death that crippled a person. So here he quotes saying, the President Roosevelt quotation that the greatest fear we have to fear is the fear itself. We we are people, we ordinary people, we common people have the greatest fear, the fear itself. And once you trump over the this fear, you are the winner. So that is how this story, Deep Water, suggests that right from the beginning when, you know, this uh, uh, Douglas, I mean, the child Douglas was, um, you know, beaten by the wave and he was knocked down by the wave. He, uh, the wave overflowed him. He was buried inside water. Anyhow, he's, he was rescued by his father. Then the second incident that was in the pool that the boy, you know, put him 
and into deep side of the pool and he was just at the bottom of water how he has struggled to i mean save himself and struggle to come out of water and finally when he survived he decided not to give up he decided to uh, learn swimming but with the help of the instructor and how the instructor really helped him regain his confidence and finally when he overcame the fear he was able to swim across the mm, the lake that lake was called lake wentworth in new york and that is how he trumped over his fear of water and thus this story teaches us the lesson that the greatest fear that man fears that man fears is the fear itself and once you overcome fear of anything like there are children who who are afraid of the fear of failures doesn't matter if you fail one time second time will succeed several you know in douglas case several times he has failed to overcome his fear of water but eventually he succeeded in overcoming the fear and finally became a winner and he swam you know to the uh, uh, lake and twice simon and proving his worth that he was really a bold and swimmer and he could prove that life is nothing but once you overcome the fear you are always the winner thank you very much and i'm sure this narration will inspire you to read the text and will come to know the the theme of this story that the greatest fear man has to fear is the fear itself thanks have a nice day